All right, players, welcome back to my series of videos uh, showcasing my work on the prologue frame for the Kingdom Death monster set. And you can see I've got my four starting survivors here. They're ready, they're painted up, they've been sealed and varnished, and they're ready for playing. Let me tell you how I went about creating their unique marbled statue look. So the first thing I did after assembling them and putting them on their face bases was I primed them in gray. And then I went over them with a number of different layers of gray, white, and cream colors. The first one I used was Dawnstone, which is a good starting stone color. And then I progressively added in some Pallid Witch Flesh. Then I basically just uh, dry brushed, I think it was two or three layers of Pallid Witch Flesh sticking to the upper areas so that the light would fall on. So you, you see kind of a mixture of not only gray, but also kind of cream and ivory colors. After that, you do a glaze, which is kind of like a wash, but you water it down a lot. Or you could just take your uh, regular layer paints and water that down a lot with some Lamian Medium or some other acrylic thinners. and. Uh, then you have kind of a similar thing to a glaze, but what I used was Nuln Oil mixed with Drakenhof Nightshade as the first one. Thin it down, water it down, it gets into the cracks and crevices, creates this very nice grayish or uh, blackish blue gray kind of uh, shadowing effect, which is great for the folds on the cloth areas. And uh, then I just highlighted back up using Dawnstone and Pallid Witch Flesh in a number of layers. The uh, the great thing about this is that I didn't have to go with four or five or six different layers depending on the model and the, the flat area surfaces. I could have just gone with a couple of highlight levels, but this is a, a War Master level commission. I wanted to really bring my best A game to it. And I think the effort really shows once we get to the marbling, which is what I'm gonna talk to you about next. So to do the marbling effect, what we're doing is we're taking this, the thin down shade wash, which is known oil, Drakenhof nightshade, and we're taking a fine brush, very, very fine tip, and you are going to be painting essentially uh, random jagged lines down the uh, down and across your model. What I tried to do is do more vertical lines, like as you can see on the survivor's leg, because it draws the eye and it follows the line of the sculpt already. If I were to go across her leg more, it would almost look like stripes, and uh, I wanted to avoid that. So there's a lot more vertical line work done on these miniatures, which you can also see across this guy's chest here. From the right, right by his head, all the way down his torso, you can see that I um, made his marbling effect uh, stand out because it catches the catches the light. When you're doing your, your dry brushing or your highlighting, you're going to be bringing out those raised areas. So by adding in a very stark slash of darker color, you're creating a very interesting focal point for the eye to look at. All down the miniature, you can see I've placed those marbled lines and it creates a very nice, interesting effect. Especially because these miniatures, the starting models are all about uh, like skin, skin skin areas, flat areas, large surfaces for painting skin tones. And uh, if I decided to go with uh, pink fleshy skin tones, it'd be great for highlighting, but I think with uh, this, these four miniatures, what I wanted to do was evoke a feeling of uh, ancient classical sculptures. So lots of, uh, lots of how they sculpted the muscles and were really defined with the, uh, those old like Roman and Greek statues, I wanted to evoke that. And that is it. Basically, after I highlighted the models back up, you might find that when you're painting your, your thin marbling lines, you might find that the, uh, the lines are too fat, they look thick, they look like someone just randomly drawing the lines on. And that's okay, because what you're going to do is you're going to go back with your highlight color, and you're just going to fix up those lines. You're going to clean them up and tidy them up. And um, the more you do, the more uh, interesting it is because you want the lines to be thin, you don't want them to be thick to look like somebody just slashed on color, and you don't want the lines to be too thick itself, which is why we're going with the washes rather than using an actual 
like Abaddon Black or Cantor Blue and thinning that down. We don't want the paint lines to look thick. We want it to kind of fade into the marbling, but we want it to be dark enough and deep enough in the center that we can pick it out. If it looks like your lines are too thick and too dark, all you have to do is go back over with your highlight color, water it down, and glaze it over the top. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna dull down the marbling colors and effects, but it's going to keep the uh, keep the, the silhouette there. It's gonna keep the line there without looking like you just painted on top of the marble. It's gonna look like it's coming out from underneath the marble or the stone, which is what I wanted. The lanterns were simply lead belcher, paint, paint the entire lantern with uh, lead belcher, and then I uh, painted the inner light parts, the actual glass areas with that uh, off-white from Vallejo game color. Again, you can use any kind of white color, and then you do three shades, or three applications, three layers of Cassandori yellow from Games Workshop. And you can also do any kind of orangey, yellowish wash or glaze, but I found Cassandori yellow to be really, really great at creating uh, glowing OSL effects without uh, overdoing it. If I'd wanted to make like the lantern glowing effects and, and bleed the yellows over onto other areas of the model, I feel like I would have had to sacrifice and compromise on the lightness and the stone gray look of the, the statue areas because you're gonna have to dull everything out to make that yellowish tone pop even more. I didn't wanna darken the tones of the rest of, this, of the miniatures, which is why I kept the OSL at a minimum and just used the wash to bring that out. Once those washes are dried, you're going to do a layer of dulled down, watered down off white. Again, right in the center, and you're just gonna really lightly glaze the center of each pane of glass so that uh, it creates that look of an inner glow. And then you basically just paint the lines of the lantern, the frame of the lantern with lead belcher one more time and add a, a little slash or highlight of Rune Fang Silver. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. I know this video is already running on seven minutes. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. These are such gorgeous sculpts. They're, they're beautiful miniatures. The muscles on them is just really well done. I can't wait to get into the other survivor sets because that's when they start getting armor. They start uh, getting some layers of protection. So I'll be able to paint more uh, different varieties of materials and textures. And that's also when in the uh, progress of this commission, what I'm gonna be doing is building on the humanity of these survivors. So even though their stone statues come to life right now, the more monsters they defeat, the stronger they become, the more human they become, the more humanity is restored to them. You're gonna start seeing more uh, flesh tones, more colors coming out, and uh, eventually as they uh, gain their full strength and power and consciousness. They're going to be completely human with complete skin tones. It's it's really great. It's a it's a great uh, way for me to envision the progress of these miniatures, so that uh, when my client is playing with them, he can see the progression, and uh, you can follow it along with the miniatures. So stay tuned because these are just the starting survivors that come with the game. There are so many miniatures that come with this box. It is mind-boggling. This is going to be a huge commission for me. And uh, I hope you stick along and see what else I do with it. Stay tuned for the two monsters on the frame, which are the uh, the Butcher and the White Lion. Those videos coming up next here. Same more boss time, same more boss channel. Latest players!